Okay. The purpose of today's recording is to demonstrate how to set up lists that are dependent on each other and also how to manage your list data from within a Forms Experience Builder application. Now, um, where this is most common is if you uh, don't have an existing web service that you can call to query your data from, or if you uh, don't want to hard code your dropdown values and they maybe are changing on a regular basis, or you want to have the ability to edit them without editing and, and then having to redeploy your application. So the first thing we're going to do is create our application. And we're going to have a main form, which I'm going to have two drop downs, and I'm going to label them D1 and D2. And each drop down is then going to be controlled by uh, the, the choices that's going to come from a separate form. So I'm going to create my D1 form, and I'm going to create my D2 form. So in, in, in this situation, all of the drop-down options for D1 are going to be stored in this D1 form. Each drop-down choice will have a label and a value. So I'm creating my fields there. And we're going to, the second drop-down cho choices are going to be linked to what is selected in the first drop-down. So we're going to create our, our linkage table here, which again is going to have a label and a value for my drop-down choices, and they're going to be tied to a selection from the D1 pop-up. Now, in order to uh, set this up the way we, we want it, uh, a little point about stages. Now, every every form will always have a start and an end stage. And when something moves from the start to the end stage, it can no longer be edited or updated. So if you want to have an object that is editable, you need to create yourself another stage. So I'm going to create an active stage here. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> change the text of the submit button to update, just to make it a little bit more meaningful. And I'm going to change the next stage to active. And what that's going to do is when somebody clicks this update button, it's going to put the record back into the active stage, it essentially creating an endless loop. And then we modify the start submit to point to active. And now my records here are, are going to be in a state that we can continually update them. I'm going to make the same changes to my other form. And now that all of my stages are set up, let's have a look at the Access tab. Now, in the Start stage for these objects that are going to be stored in my D1 form and my D2 form, I don't want everybody to be able to create them. This should only be creatable by the administrator, which is me. On the active stage, I want everybody to be able to read them, but I want the administrator to be able to update them. And let's fix this for the D2 form as well. So start only the administrator has access. Everybody has read, administrator has update. So now that my access permissions are set up, let's get to work on creating the services that that is going to make this work. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a service that queries this D1 form to get me all of the responses that exist there. So we're going to open the Properties dialog. We're going to click Edit. We're going to change the option to use a service, and then click Add Edit Service Configuration. We change our catalog to IBM Forms Experience Builder. And this is going to return me a list of all the applications that I have 
access to query. But I really only want to query my application, so I'm going to filter the list. by putting in my application name and then clicking search. And that's going to return only the services that exist within this application. And you can see there's a couple of different services and different options that we can choose. But what I want to do is I want to click search. And before I do that, you might ask, well, why not? Why don't I choose retrieve? Uh, retrieve will return only one record based on the, the specified criteria where search returns all of the, of the records. So since I'm going to be populating the D1 dropdown, I select the D1 form search. I click input. I don't want to specify any inputs because I want everything in the list. And then I select outputs and I need to bind the label to the display value and the value to the saved value of my first drop-down. Click OK, OK again, OK again. <clears throat> and now and now my first drop-down is configured. I'm going to save this, and we're going to go back to the Manage panel, and I'm going to deploy the application. just to show you how uh, this is starting to shape up. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to launch the D1 form, and we're going to enter in a few default records. Now, my D1, I want to have the values of 1, 2, and 3. So I'm submitting three individual records. And once that's finished, I'm now going to launch my Form 1. And you'll see that on form load, all three of those choices that I entered there are part of my pop-up. If I go back and I launch D1 form again, and I add a fourth option, and I come back to my form and I refresh it, you'll see that I now have four options. So what we're doing here gives us the ability to dynamically update drop-down choices without ever having to edit or redeploy our application. So let's take this uh, to the next step where we're now going to define the, the drop-down two choices based on what is selected in D1. So we need to set up a service here. We're going to follow the sim similar steps that we did before. We're going to add a service configuration we're going to query for only the services in this application. And that search terms box is not case sensitive, and it will search for anything that matches what you've put in there. So you could put it any keywords, and it would return you all of the services that contain those keywords. So this time we're going to select the D2 form search. Now, in this case, we do want to filter our result set based on whatever the user selected in D1. So I'm going to select D1, and we're going to search where this drop-down in the D form, the T, D2 form, is equal to the value that was selected, and then. In the output, we're going to link the label with my D2 label and the value with the D2 value. We're going to save that. So now this dropdown is also configured. But one more thing that, that we need to set up here, which is on my D2 form, where I had a D1 dropdown that needs to be populated with the values from the D1 form. Now, if you recall, we created this service on the main form, but we can't reuse it because services are specific to the form that they're on. And you can see that here in the Settings tab under Services, where if I click Form 1, you'll see the D1 and the D2 search services that I created. But if I go to my D2 form, there are no services here. 
Now I can add it here, or I can add it through the properties of this dropdown. So we're going to do that. Click Edit, Use a Service, Add Service Configuration, and we're going to go through the, the steps here one more time. I'm just going to type in a few, one word there, just to demonstrate again the, the way the search works. So this may return more results than what I'm actually looking for, but it's just enough to filter. And in this case, I want to again return the D1 form search. I'm not going to specify any inputs. And my outputs, I'm going to bind my label to my display value and my value to my save value. Click OK and OK and OK. And now we have linked the D2 form to the D1, and we've also linked both drop downs on my main form. So we'll give this a save. And we'll go back to the Manage panel and we'll redeploy the application because any changes that you've made will not take effect until you've actually redeployed it. And now I'm going to launch the D2 form, and you'll see that I have all four choices from D1. So we're going to set up our initial choices here. So one, I want A, B, and C. And with two, I want D. I want F. So now we've set up our second drop down data, and now we're going to launch our main form. You'll see that to start with, D2 has all of the options that we can choose, or as, and I'm just realizing here now that I missed I miss the step. Uh, so let's go back and edit this. So what we set up here in my in my services is that when this form loads, this drop down is going to populate my choices. But I also want it to populate the choices when the value of D1 changes. And so we're going to do that by clicking on the events on item change event, call a service, and then select the D2 form search. So now when I make a selection in D1, it's going to change the contents of drop down. So we'll redeploy the application. And now we will launch our main form. And I will select one. We should only see A, B, and C. I'll select two. We'll see D and E. And if I select three, we'll only see F. And if I select four, we will see nothing because um, there's nothing in my data set. Now, <clears throat> if we go to our view responses, this is where we can see how all of this uh, works together. So in my D1 form, these are all of the potential choices that you can have in your first dropdown. And then in D2, these are all of the choices that you can have in dropdown 2, and you can see how they are mapped. And we can add additional properties if we want from this screen. So I can add a, another, another choice. And that will automatically show up on my first form. And we can also go in and edit these if, if, we, um, if we want to. And so now when I go back to my main form, and I launch an instance of that form, uh, you will see the edits that we've made. So from an administrative standpoint, if you use this in your applications today, you will be able to dynamically update your drop-down values and maintain them without ever having to edit or redeploy your application.